When installing a custom car audio system, we must mount our new aftermarket amplifiers in the vehicle and we want to be sure to keep our wiring clean and tidy. So how did I make this custom amplifier rack? What materials are used and how is it mounted in the vehicle and where will it be in the trunk? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's answer those questions and let's kick things off with seeing what amplifiers I'm gonna be using for the Jetta build with monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control. For this build, I'm using the Audio Control D-4.800 and the Audio Control LC-1.800. These two amplifiers have proven to be quite the combination. You can have substantial bass along with a really, really great sounding system because this D stands for DSP. This amplifier has a digital signal processor built in that allows us to time align, control all the crossovers, and fully EQ each channel. Additionally, if we actually look at the amplifier here, see how there are four inputs, but there's one set of outputs here, that's because we can DSP control that set of outputs that we send to a second amplifier. So although this amplifier doesn't have a DSP built in, we can still DSP control that signal. I definitely love this combo of amps. If you wanted another set of channels, you could step up to the D-6.1200 that has six channels. But otherwise, if you guys wanna learn more about these, check them out at the link down in the video description. The first thing I wanna do here is kind of come up with my layout. Now, do notice that I've put some pieces of one inch tape on the plastic board that I'm using here. And I've done that because I wanna remember where those risers are at on the box. I want to avoid having any fasteners go through that area or any zip ties in those areas. The plastic board that I'm using is a piece of quarter inch HDPE. You could also use quarter inch ABS. You could use half inch expanded PVC or you could use wood. I prefer to use plastic material. Now when I ran all my wiring in the vehicle, I had all the power on this side. So I wanna have my power distribution blocks over here where the 12 volt constant is going to come in along with the ground connections. And I know that I'm gonna have my RCA signal wires coming from this side, probably up into here because they need to go into this amplifier. I'm also going to have all of the speaker output on this side of the car as well. I think it always makes sense to mount your amplifiers in the distribution blocks first, as long as you've kind of considered where you want the wiring to go. I know that I want them over to this edge because I need to make a slight curve into this closest connection right here. But I like the layout here, so I'm gonna start using my transfer punches to transfer the center location of each of the mounting holes, and then used my center punch to make a starting point where I will use the drill bit. Now I can proceed with drilling all those through holes where I'll be bolting it to the box, and I can also drill and tap the holes where the amps are gonna mount onto the board. For drilling and tapping the board, I really find this kit to be super handy, link down in the video description. For a bit of a finish touch, I also use this chamfer bit on all of the holes to help guide the bolts through. Adding threads to the holes allows me to take the amps on and off multiple times without worrying about degrading the quality of the hole. The next step is I can take all of my fasteners and mount the amplifiers along with the distribution blocks to the panel. There we have it, everything is mounted nice and solid. This is looking good. And if you guys didn't know, it's a proven fact that you can actually get better sound quality by perfectly aligning each of the Allen heads. With everything mounted, we can move on to wiring. I like to start with using the largest wiring first because if you think about it, the largest wiring is always gonna be the hardest to maneuver and plan a path for. The other wires are much smaller, so they're a lot easier to work around the power wire if need be. Before you do start running the wiring though, you definitely want to consider and kind of think out in your head where each of the different paths is going to be. That way you can plan ahead if you do need to allow any clearances. got this first power wire mounted in here with all the zip ties holding it securely in place. This wiring is definitely super solid and not going anywhere. And just so you guys know what I'm doing to measure out each of these holes is I'm just drawing a line and then measuring each inch and a half. Now a quick note here from the editing station, I'm definitely looking forward to checking out the new D wire ruler from Mobile Solutions and Dean and Fernando. But I actually shot the clips for this video a few weeks ago before that tool was publicly released. So I'm looking forward to using it in the future. 
wire. I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna do the same with the remote wire and then I'm gonna do the same with the ground connections. So here we go, we've got the power, the ground, and the remote connections made. And just so you guys know, I ran myself a little quick disconnect plug right here, wrapped in heat shrink for the remote control. So definitely making some progress here. We've got the power, the ground, and the remote connection. The remote connections are teed together. I've mounted in the ground links on the negative side of the distribution block. And on the positive side, we'll wait till everything is fully connected in the vehicle. I do wish that my amplifier rack would have had a little bit more space so that I could have had these runs kind of swoop and run parallel to a connection like this and looked really nice. Unfortunately, space was a little limited here, so I had to do some little tight bends, but no problem. It's still gonna get the job done. Next up here, I have a short little RCA connection that I need to use to connect the DSP amplifier to the subwoofer amplifier. So I'm gonna get that mounted, but I also wanna make sure that I drill some holes for the zip ties that are going to hold the wires down that we won't be able to connect until we're in the vehicle. The holes that I need to make connections for that we're not going to be attaching in this video are going to be for the RCA inputs going into the amplifier, for that ACR3 remote dash control connection going into the amplifier, and for the speaker outputs. I added the RCA connection first and I planned out where I need to make my holes. And again, I used my center punch to just make the initial note of those locations. Now I know that I also want to make some holes in order to mount the subwoofer wire here. That's gonna go from here and it's gonna come off the panel and obviously go into the box. And again, I wanna make this easy to remove if possible. And since these have to be tightened down, what I thought I would do is use one of these special connectors. I have a full video I did about these. Again, link up in the corner of the screen. Everything else we will be able to just unplug just by pulling on it. These RCAs we can just pull to disconnect. This is like a phone style connection, so we can just pull that. And then on this amplifier, the speaker connections are these type of connection here here where you can see I can just pry that out. So if we need to, we could unplug all the speaker wires all at once if we need to access and remove the amplifier board. And here we have it guys, the rest of the wires that I can zip tie for the time being are attached to the board. Now I just need to get this whole assembly mounted to the box. Now again, because I wanna keep this amp rack serviceable and if I need to remove it off this enclosure, I don't wanna use normal wood screws, I'm using these, these are threaded inserts. The other thing I've picked up here is these special rubber washers. These will help to further isolate the amplifier rack from the subwoofer enclosure. When I built this subwoofer box, I added additional strength on the inside to keep this panel from vibrating. You guys can check that out in the build video. And these ribs themselves that are standoffs, so those also add some strength. But by having these rubber washers, we'll be able to further reduce the vibration. The plan is to use a normal washer on top of the rubber washer which will then go through the plastic, and then on the back side between the two, another rubber washer. This will help to stop the transfer of energy. So let's get this assembly mounted on the box. So here we have the amp rack completely mounted on the enclosure. Now obviously once we put this into the vehicle, we can connect our main power and ground connections along with the speakers and other connections that I mentioned earlier. So that's gonna be the next step. I'm gonna mount everything in the vehicle and then in the next video, we're gonna be making the beauty panel that is gonna cover everything up and be shown off in the trunk. To catch that next build video along with future car audio lessons and product overviews, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. To learn more about the amplifiers that I use in this product, Project, definitely check out monthly channel sponsor Audio Control. You can learn more at the links down in the video description. Special thanks to them along with Bryson, Mike, Ali, Jared, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And thank you for watching.